Chubay, if you are a small business owner who is trying to leverage all that live commerce and the technology can offer, you're definitely in the right place. First of all, please subscribe to this podcast so that you can see and hear more of this kind of content before as well to let me know if there are other businesses you think that I should feature who are doing live stream right. And today, very excited to be able to chat with a small business owner, an e-commerce only retailer who is leveraging live stream to build their business. Welcoming to the show, we got Esther Ifra from Guestify. Uh, Esther, so happy to be talking to you because you are one of those businesses that is using all the tools available to you to promote your business, to engage your customers, and to make more sales. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for having me. And um, I'm excited to talk about my business and as well as you know, this new adventure of live selling that we've embarked on as a brand. And so, yeah, excited to dive in. Amazing. Well, let's talk, first of all, a little bit about your background. Did you always dream of being an entrepreneur and starting your own business? So um, not initially in, my, in the beginning of my career, but I did as I got into more managerial positions. So I have a very much a corporate background and I was always very happy and comfortable being, you know, part of a very big machine and having really big national impact. I worked at Canadian Tire, which is Canada's largest, you know, retail store. As I got into more entrepreneurial type roles, like a buyer, I was a buyer for a few years and then I moved into brand management and I was managing a huge portfolio. It's $850 million portfolio. And this is when I started to get the feeling and the experience of really owning and running my own business within a larger shop. And I, I loved it. And after 17 years, I just felt like I needed a change. An opportunity came up to relocate uh, to Florida and I was, I just grabbed it. I said, this is this is meant to be, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm diving in and I'm going to open that business that I've always wanted to open. And so here we are. <laughs> and so you had really a great opportunity to not only start from scratch, but to really leverage all of the things that you learned with the buying experience, with merchandising, with marketing. Tell us the story of the start of your e-commerce only store. Yes. So Guestify is a new fashion brand and our tagline is we are totally obsessed with travel. So there are many fashion retail brands online. And the one thing that differentiates us is that everything we do, we eat, sleep and breathe is travel fashion. So it's all about travel and it's tying that into your experiences you know, around the world and tying that into what you're going to wear, how you're going to put together a look for each of those scenarios of travel. So this really was an opportunity to bring fashion and travel together and travel is something as I kind of moved into my adult life and got the opportunity to see the world a bit more, I've just fallen in love with travel. And now the more I build my network of travel enthusiasts and fall and influencers, I am just so inspired by these women and I, I work primarily with women um, because it's women's fashion and they're just, they're brave, they're bold. Um, I just fundamentally believe that when we travel, we encourage a brighter, bolder version of ourselves. And this inspired me, that little nugget just totally inspired me to say, how can I be a part of that experience? And how can I take that for, for women and give them what they need to kind of show themselves and express themselves in a way that makes them feel great while they're traveling. And so that's what Guestify is all about. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, essentially all the things that you are trying to be for others with your brand I believe you also have in you, you used a, a word, you said bold and brave, right? And so this is a perfect transition into that live selling space. I mean, let's be honest, when we think of 
the millions and millions of dollars that you are ultimately responsible for with your own targets. We're not there yet with live commerce, in particular here in the Western markets. And obviously, we all talk about that holy grail of what China is doing. I personally don't think we're ever going to get to that level. But as an independent retailer, as an e-commerce only retailer, why did you believe, especially with your background in marketing as well, why did you believe that would be an incredible strategy for you to embark on early in the game? Yes. So if you think about the fundamentals of marketing, and that's how I grew up in my marketing career, it's all about building awareness and consideration, and then eventually conversion and loyalty, hopefully after that. And so at this stage of the game or an early brand or new, and it was all about finding all the tools at our disposal to build awareness. We weren't necessarily chasing down conversion, but we were trying to find ways to get our brand out there to talk about why we're different, which is very hard to do even through socials. Um, why are we different? What makes us special? Why should you care? Um, and live selling was this great opportunity to just talk to the customer directly. I think what was also really important for us is trust, building trust. We're not just some you know, AI generated website where real, there are real people behind it. And it, it's a, it's an opportunity to build trust, to put a face to the brand and to show the customer that there is someone actually here behind the scenes, thinking about you, the travel enthusiast in a very real way. And so I jumped at this opportunity. I never thought I'd be in front of the camera. Honestly, I'm not trying to be an influencer. It's like not my thing, but um, I loved it. I had the time of my life and I'm, I'm in my yes era where I just say yes to everything and we see what happens. I wanted to revisit some of the phrases that you were talking about, like in, you know, awareness, for instance, right? So we're talking ultimately about a sales funnel and ultimately you hope for that conversion. But for you at this stage, especially with your marketing background, I hear lots of other KPIs for you that mm -hmm. that you sort of determined were going to really help you measure the success of an event. Do you want to sell? A hundred percent. But but you've recognized some very important other elements. And and with the trust factor, I believe it was uh, I think it was Accenture that came out with a report with respect to live commerce. And I shouldn't even say live commerce with e-commerce. Is, is what they came out with and talking about trust being one of the factors that maybe stopped people, a barrier purchasing mm -hmm. online and the face behind a brand. I think Esther, you really nailed it when you talked about that, because with e-commerce, like literally a dot com, and especially with social media, we just never know what's real, right? Yeah. So this is a chance for people to get to know you as a person, you as a brand, and also to support you as a woman entrepreneur. Yes, yes. That's a big part of our, you know, what do you stand for beyond fashion? What do you stand for beyond travel? It's very much about emboldening, empowering, um, becoming the biggest ally to all our all our girlfriends out there. Our KPIs for, for live selling were not conversion. We knew we knew that big players out there are doing live selling and are not necessarily getting the conversion that you might expect if they were to put a sale on in their bricks and mortar store. It's different. So um, for us, conversion was an icing on the cake. We were really happy with the awareness. We got a bunch of new followers. We got engagement. We're building trust one step at a time, and we know it takes time. It takes time and we'd be silly to think that there's not some level of investment. And for any small business owner that is out there thinking, okay, where can I start? You can start with the entire live selling experience for almost nothing. Like I'm taking out the platforms for a moment here. I'm talking about the idea of doing what Esther did, which was get in front of the camera, tell her brand story, show what she brought and why this might solve your problems or bring about confidence or give you what you need for your vacation. That's where you can start. You can start on a Facebook live. You can start on a, an Instagram live, just go live. And then of course there are investments, Esther, and this is where you've decided that your key performance indicators um, that again, extend sort of 
prior to the conversion state was worth you investing in. How does it feel to be somebody that's on the front end? Like I said, I didn't expect to be front facing, but I also just felt that at this early stage, it would be really hard to replicate the knowledge, the purpose, and the words in my heart and in my mind that need to come out to convey what my brand is, who we are, what we stand for. And then going further, what that then means for why did you choose this particular article of clothing? And why does it go with this particular bag? And zeroing in on like down to like when I was sourcing this, this was a dead ringer for a travel bag and here's why. And these are all the things that are going on in my mind that as you know, a sole proprietor, I don't get to talk about with lots of people, but there is meaning behind it. And it was such a cool opportunity to be able to talk about it and, um, and to try and get comfortable with the idea of getting in front of the camera. <laughs> And I think the idea as well, because you are an e-commerce only retailer, you've been able to now create a store environment. I mean, there are many retailers that are out there watching small business. Maybe you've got one shot, maybe you've got two. You might be this independent small retailer that really loves that human connection and putting a person in that right piece and having the ability to tell the story behind not only your brand, but the brand of an article of clothing that you're presenting to and how it was manufactured and their value systems. And so it's for all those reasons, a lot of you love your brick and mortar. Now that doesn't mean you have to give up your brick and mortar experience when you embrace live stream. And yet if you don't have a brick and mortar, you can do like what Esther is doing is creating that community, which again, not only engages your customers, but it also engages you as a proprietor. Now, when we talk about you preparing for your live streams, I want to make this as simple for people to understand that although there's always learning curves, Esther, oh, yeah. you can get started and, and it doesn't take much to get started. So take aside the camera confidence. I can give people tips on that. We'll get your tips as well, but let's talk about how you sort of start your show in the preparation stages. So you go, okay, in a month from now, we're going live, let's yeah. say, and then how does, what's your flow of what you do? Okay, so if I had to break it down into like the big major chunks, I would say the first step is building your team. So not everyone needs a team. I think you can totally do this by yourself. If you're going with a free platform like live Facebook or Instagram, you don't need a team. But my idea was my strategy. If I had to say my strategy in one sentence, it was constantly create interest. I wanted to have interest at every moment during the show and make sure that I'm not losing people because then we would just, they would sign off, right? I want to make sure we're constantly um, creating interest. So how do we do that? So my first thought was I want to gather the right team. And so this is where we brought in Stage 10, who were our, they were the production company that we worked with. But before that even, I wanted to have a co-host. And the experiment that I was going for was Nobody knows who Esther Ifra is yet, but maybe I can get some credibility by association by bringing on a partner influencer who has, you know, she's a micro influencer. She's got amazing travel cred. She's got a picture of herself in, the, in front of the 50 states. You know, someone that speaks to travel that really demonstrates we're here for the travel enthusiast. So I brought on a co-host and then I said, okay, as much as I wish, I will not be modeling the clothing. So I need a model and I would like the clothing to come to life. It's one thing to hold up a garment and to be able to talk to it, that's fine. But this is all about recreating the scenarios of travel. And so how do we best do that? And, and so I wanted to work with a model and I just found the most amazing people. It doesn't cost an arm and a leg. Um, there is so much that you can do for each other in this business. And we partnered together and we really had the dream team. The next step was creating a story. So the show had to have a flow to it that was easy to understand, fun to follow through, and also had just enough enticement to stay on and watch that next segment. You got to start with a hook, right? So we started with, we're introducing four looks. That was the that was the first thing I said. I didn't introduce myself. I didn't say anything. I just said today we're talking about four looks, right? 
So it catches them right from the get-go. And we journeyed through four travel looks and four different scenarios. So it's very satisfying because it's like, now we finished the first look, let's go to the next look. And then they're like, ooh, this is day tripping. I wonder what they wear to the, for the dining out scenario. So it was a great flow. And I highly recommend that you build a story and a flow with a beginning, a middle and an end so that you yourself can easily plan what you wanna say, the flow of the show, the samples you need to buy, all of that that goes into it comes attached to this story. And it was also very easy for our production company to work with us because we were super organized. We got great feedback from them, but they understood, you know, outfit one, outfit two, three, and four, put up this card when we're talking about outfit three, it gives a structure and, and a flow. So there are benefits for the customer, but also um, on the back end behind the camera, what's going on there too. And just to sort of clarify for anyone listening, when Esther's talking about putting up slides and, and graphics and all of that, those are some of the obvious benefits of working with a live stream shopping platform, uh, in addition to the ability to buy in show as opposed to maybe post a link that directs people to a website and takes them out of show. So these are things that are, are great sort of once you feel that this is going to be your strategy, because I think you want to commit to this kind of strategy. You don't want to do a one-off because the reality is, is you get learnings from every single time. You talked about bringing the products to life by having a model. And I love that you brought that up, Esther, because this is that sort of thing that's missing with traditional e-commerce, but something that shopping channels did really well, right? The, by having models and yeah. having posts that wore the clothing. So I love that that was part of your strategy. This is obviously tapping into a lot of your expertise from your past jobs. And I thought it was very smart as well for you to bring on a co-host because you're really not only leveraging their expertise, but their reach. Did you kind of handle the sales or did, did you work with that influencer to handle things like the calls to action and any of the other, you know, housekeeping, gamification, limited time announcements, all that? So I talked about the discount which was live throughout the show and still available on our website if you shop through the live on our platform on our website. But um, she talked about the contest, how it's gonna work. And then I had her almost support almost everything I was saying. So what we did was there was a great flow. There was the introduction, then, then I introduced the first look, the model comes in, we show the first look. And then after every look, the model goes out and then I two up. Two up means when the screen splits, kind of like how we are right now. And I'm no, I know you know that, but our audience. Um, and, and then I would talk to Susie and I would say, Susie, how would you style this look? And I know you have this item. And how did you, I saw you wore it to a weekend in New York with your girlfriends. Talk to us about how that felt, you know, all of that. So she, she brought credibility and like a realness to it that I couldn't have done by myself. Yeah, I think that's so smart. And again, it becomes like two girlfriends shopping. Yes. Everyone's an expert in their own right. Everyone's got personal style, but everyone is also looking for alternatives. I love in your storytelling of your show as well, Esther, you talked about having sort of almost like these capsule bits within the show. So you had, even within the theme of the show, four looks, right? Mm -hmm. There's your four looks. But then you had them segmented by experiences, which is not always how traditional marketing on an e-commerce would be done. So this was very much aligned with really the way you designed your store itself, your e-commerce store. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, what makes us unique and we wanted to stand out. And one of the ways for us to really communicate to the customer, the traveler, that we're here for them specifically was, yes, you wanna shop by category and you could do that on our website. If you're just coming on and you're like, I need a dress for the beach and I can't find something, you can search for a dress. But we wanted to fundamentally build our structure around the traveler and how they think. Because when we plan for a trip, we don't think about a packing list. In our brain, the first thing that comes up is, oh, I'm going to have dinner with that person. And then I'm going to go to the beach. And then I might have a nighttime pool party. 
and then I have to do some working out or some adventure travel. And so they're thinking about scenarios. And so we wanted to form the website in that same way of thinking. So we've categorized and organized our whole assortment. We even curate to it by scenario. Very smart and an easy way for people to engage and to be excited about not only the scenario you're presenting, but it almost could be a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, Esther says, we're going to go from the beach to dinner. All right, honey, we're going <laughs> from the beach to dinner because I've got the outfit to be able to wear to do that. So of course, what we're talking about is creating a theme. For those of you listening or watching, there are many ways that you can access that information. You can go on to Pinterest. You can look on to Amazon Live. You can watch other live streams. You can really tap into whatever you believe your customer motivation will be. And then the benefit of live stream shopping is you are reaching the customer where they are. If you don't have a brick and mortar store, you need to get them shopping online. Live stream shopping is an exceptional interactive, very personal way of doing that. If you have a brick and mortar, it's another way to expand your reach that doesn't limit access by geography. Most of you are shipping. Maybe you're shipping around the world. Maybe you're shipping around your country. So you can really elevate your sales opportunities and your community building. Esther, you had to learn essentially to present on camera. So how did you get, and we'll go through kind of all the processes, but I want to start with how did you get to the point where you felt comfortable going live? Because it's a lot different than filming a social media video that you can edit and filter and fix. The mantra that I have in this, in this lately in my life is do it scared. Okay. So it, it, there's a combination of jump into it and do it scared and practice, practice, practice. I was standing in front of the mirror talking about clothing for days before the, the show. Um, I've done many videos that I posted on my website, um, just talking about the clothing, the merits of the clothing, or if I showed it to friends, I would literally do a very detailed walkthrough and they're like, why don't you record this? And I was like, why? And so what I realized is it doesn't have to be an, a big intimidating thing. It really is just you talking about your product, which is what we're all most passionate about and explaining to the customer why they should care. And if you just go straight to that and don't think about, oh, is my hair, is my makeup, is the lighting? It's about you making a real true and authentic connection with the customer. You know, that's nothing's better than that. It's actually an incredible feeling. And what I also realized is that essentially my whole career, I've been doing live selling in one form or another. I've been in many boardrooms. I've been in front of a lot of big and tough audiences where I have to talk to them about the new product launches, why they're important, why they should invest, why we should put millions of dollars into custom packaging. So those are all my selling moments that no, there wasn't necessarily a camera in front of me, but if you tap into that presenter in you, I was able to just go back and say, this is no different than that. And so let's bring that Esther on and see what happens. <laughs> and um, and I, I had fun with it. It was, it was really great. I'm learning tons. Like I'm by no means an expert, but I do plan to become one. But you're doing it. And, and that's what I talk about. Just leap into live stream. This is the key. And you do learn. And even as a professional presenter, do you think I'm perfect all the time? No. Do I stumble on my words all the time? Do I make mistakes? 100%. And you know, what gets the most um, mm -hmm. interest from the audience is that relatability factor. The fact that you're not super polished, that you you know, do once in a while have a hair out of place. I mean, gosh, heaven forbid, should we not wear, you know, 20 liters of hairspray on our hair. And so, no, I, I mean, I, I applaud you for stepping out of what would be potentially your comfort zone day after day. But every time you do this, you do get more comfortable. I love also how you talked about the fact that you've been live selling all your life, because if we now reverse engineer why someone might want to learn live selling skills, whether it's through me or just by watching, you know, hundreds and thousands of live streams, I mean, if that's how you want to do it, that's fine. But we reverse engineer it. How can you now use those skills 
that you learn today or that you learn tomorrow. In store, if you have a brick and mortar, you're going to be able to communicate the features and the benefits at a deeper level. Because Esther, when we talk about clothing, for instance, right? Because this now comes down to the presentation skills of a live selling talent. Because now we're not just selling, we're actually selling knock, knock. I keep doing this right through a screen. When you describe a fabrication, for instance, or the weight of a fabric or how something is going to fit, it's not enough for you to say, this is really soft or, oh, this has a nice weight to it, right? You have to be so much more descriptive. Yes, it's funny you mentioned that because one of the sweaters that I was showing, uh, my model was wearing it over her shoulder and it is the softest sweater. It's strange. There is, it's like a, there's some cotton content in it, but it is so soft. And I was trying to find the right words to get that across. And it came to me, I said, this is almost like a neoprene like texture. That's how soft it is. It's just smooth. And um, it's so important to be specific. Like I would say specificity is magic. If you could find the right words that tap, that make people be like, ah, I get it. That's what you're looking for. And I try to do that with each of the garments to find like a, a snippet of something that was just relatable that they're like, oh yeah, I get it. I get why that's so much more comfortable than that small pain point that I have with my other garment, you know? Exactly. And, and so when I was learning to be a TV home shopping host, and these are a lot of the skills that I teach with my HSH method at livesellingschool.com. But one of the first books we were given was, I think it's called words that sell. And mm -hmm. I can't remember the author, but I, I'll link it. I'll link it on here as well. You can pick it up at Amazon, but it offers a lot of great descriptive words. And, and so these are, this becomes your Bible as a salesperson, especially for somebody that is selling through the screen. So one of the words or phrases that we were taught in TV home shopping, and you'll hear it now that if you ever watch TV home shopping, you'll hear it all the time. Kitten belly soft, because who doesn't love petting a kitten? And the, and the underbelly is so much softer than, you know, the back, for instance. Uh, another one, another one was the inner ear of a Labrador retriever puppy. So oh. the minute, right. So the look on your face, and I know there are some people listening, so you just have to imagine the look that's on your own face. When I said that, uh, it, it was that like, oh my gosh, I know exactly what they're talking about or rose petal soft, right? Mm -hmm. So if you've got roses on your table, touch them, and that might be the texture of luxury that your silk sleeping gown that someone might be selling is. So these are, these are again, strategies and tips that live sellers around the world in the TV home shopping realm have certainly mastered. And, you know, Esther, you're doing that right now and you'll continue to get better and better. Now, when it comes to live stream shopping, especially because you're dealing with online platforms, again, whether you're using a shopping platform or not, you do have to worry about your backgrounds. So mm -hmm. what were some of the considerations for you as a fashion brand, and in particular, uh, a brand that is selling travel fashion. Did you incorporate any of those elements into your backdrop? I was trying to uh, sort of pull between the two tensions of simplistic, not distracting, um, and true to the brand um, and pleasant, you know? So I could have put luggage and all kinds of stuff and posters. And I, I just wanted to come across clean, very much on brand, which Guestify is all about simplicity, freshness, clean, um, you know, that sort of modern vibe that the modern woman would appreciate. And we didn't have a lot of space. We wanted to make sure that we had a garment rack because I wanted to be able to interact with the product and say, you, you're seeing this color on the model and I've got it here in black and in blue. So this is what it looks like. And it just made it feel like they're actually in a store. So I was trying to replicate a bricks and mortar type of experience, but a very simplified, clean version of it. You want to make sure that it's representing your brand and that it matches what you're showing online. Exactly. I mean, ultimately, when you were hosting as you were as an independent retailer, e-commerce only, you are in our world of TV home shopping, you're the stager, right? You're, you're the merchandiser, you are the host, you are 
the camera person, you're everything. And so kudos to you for getting it going. It sounds like, you know, you're getting traction and it does take time. So I don't want anyone to think out there, you know, when I tell you how much, you know, product sales, I've done tens of millions in TV home shopping over the time that I was there. Do not take that as a, this is what's going to happen with you. We are talking about ground level and we're talking about a different level of marketing. And that's where I think, you know, Esther, you and I connected very early on because I felt that your background in merchandising and marketing and the fact that you are on the on the ground level pioneering live stream shopping in, in the West here, I think that that's, you know, really speaks to your vision and how your expertise is backing up what you know will benefit your brand over long term and to keep you competitive, Esther, right? Like it, it's a competitive market selling in the online space. And so for you, that had to be a consideration as well. It's about building awareness and trust. It's yet another one of those tools that allow us to reach to the customer and show them what we offer. And it's fun. Like and it can be fun. <laughs> Absolutely. I do think though, that it's gonna be a fundamental part of the future of retail. I'm so excited to keep doing it. And, um, and maybe by the time it becomes the norm, we'll be experts that uh, others will look to. So that's part of my strategy and our strategy as a brand is to stay ahead of the curve. And isn't that the key? And it's exactly why I started Live Selling School. And I'm trying again, just like Esther, help you leap into live stream. I encourage everybody to subscribe if you are interested in this content. I want to keep producing this kind of content. I want to keep amplifying and highlighting great brands like Guestify and learning from pioneers and innovators and disruptors like Esther Ifra. Esther, if anyone wants to shop with you or get to know about your brand, what are the best ways to do that? Absolutely. Thank you. Um, our website is www.guestify.store. And you can find us on all socials, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. And our handle is at guestify.dotstore. So you'll find us on those socials. We're very active on Instagram. We post daily. Um, and if you want to email us with any ideas, thoughts, partnership opportunities, you can just email us at in 